I always hated my nose. I despised it to the point that I would intentionally leave it out of my little self-portrait drawings I did as a child. And it was like I was trying to erase this feature from myself. Now you and I can obviously see there's nothing wrong with my nose. It's a regular old nose. But I'm willing to bet every single person in this room has some minor physical quality about themselves that they don't particularly love. So if you had the option to completely erase this quality from your future children, would you? This actually might be a real future possibility with the emergence of new gene editing technology making this an option for you. Gene editing is a thrilling advancement in science and technology, but it comes with risks. So how does gene editing work? Gene editing is a type of genetic engineering in which we either insert, modify, delete, or replace DNA inside of the genome, resulting in expression of different traits. And this is done through a process called CRISPR, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. And in this, there's a Cas9 protein that essentially follows an RNA strand with complementary base pairs to the DNA strand that's targeted. And so the Cas9 follows this RNA, and whenever it gets there, it can cut the DNA at this point. And <coughs> this, the DNA at this point can either repair itself to be missing this gene that was cut, or scientists can then go and insert a new gene to modify it. An example of this would say, be like, if somebody had brown eyes, you could go in with the Cas9 protein, cut it, and modify it so that less melanin is produced, and therefore blue eyes are shown. Next slide, please. Um, whenever you do this to children, this is known as designer babies. This is where children are modified to have different height, weight, eye color, hair color, and this is all predetermined by the parents for aesthetic purposes. Next slide, please. Now that we understand the, or the process of gene editing, we have to understand the controversies that go with it. It's important to understand the implications of this technology because it is developing rapidly and may soon allow us very flawed human beings to essentially play God. So in the past, we have had a very complex ethical history with regards to trying to determine what genes are expressed in our population. With the emergence of gene editing, we are given the power to determine what genes are considered inferior and what genes are superior, what genes are good and what genes are bad. Um, and this is a very common like practice with eugenics, which is the practice of attempting to improve the human species by only allowing certain hereditary qualities to be bred. <coughs> In, you can leave it there, sorry. <laughs> In the American Journal of Public Health, authors Grodin and Miller even go as far as to compare human gene editing <coughs> to the events of social cleansing and the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. And while obviously the forced sterilization and the forced killing of different ethnic populations is considerably worse, they do still have the same common theme, letting the good genes survive and eliminating the bad genes. Another common controversy related to gene editing is the fear that it could result in gene-based class systems. This is seen in the movie Gattaca, as noted by Dee Olympio in her article, Should You Design the Perfect Baby? So in Gattaca, there are people that are considered valids and invalids. It is widespread, or it's popular to edit your child to have superior genes, like superior intellect, appearance, personality, and then there are the invalids who do not receive the same kind of gene editing. In Gattaca, the valids receive better opportunities to jobs and more successful lives, while the invalids do not get to receive these same opportunities, thus resulting in a lower class. While this obviously is not happening yet, it's a very common fear with ethicists that if gene editing becomes more widespread, 
then the upper class will be able to afford to do this, resulting in an upper class with better genes and then a lower class that can't afford to do the same process. So as the next generation of scientists, it's important that we understand how this works. With Today, I discuss how CRISPR and gene editing works, and then I explain the controversies that surround it. While gene editing is an absolutely thrilling advancement in science, you have to understand the controversies related to it so you can make an ethical decision and use it properly. So imagine that insecure little child that you once were. Maybe the little boy that didn't quite hit his growth spurt on time, or the little girl that was always envious of their friend's silky blonde hair. Do you think that gene editing is the answer to these insecurities? Thank you. Thank you.